She said, this is abnormal for a servant of God, one who was devoted to God. The first step is for you to understand that the state you are in now that needs to turn around is not normal. You must begin to recognize when some things are not normal. In your life, in your health, in your ministry, get to admit that some things are not normal. Dissatisfaction precedes a turnaround. What's that mess you're in right now? Tell me what's that situation that seems unending, that seems unpleasant? Oh. Watch him turn it in your favor. Watch him work it for your good. He's not done with what he started. He's not done until it's good. I said, let him turn it in your favor. Watch him work it for your good. He is not done with what he started. He's not done until it's good. Hello, peace. Hello, joy. Hello, love. Hello, strength. Hello, hope, it's a new horizon. Hello, peace. Hello, joy. Hello, love. Hello, strength. Hello, hope, it's a new horizon. Yeah. If you're ready for a breakthrough, you can open up and just receive oh what he's doing now is nothing you've ever seen do you believe you've never seen it before hello peace hello joy hello love hello strength hello hope if the new
Previously on Fresh Dew. Hello and welcome to Fresh Dew Live. I am Pastor Nkechi Ene and this is Bidding City. We are so excited to be in Bidding City for Fresh Dew Live 2024 and this is day two. Now I'll let you give another shout and the cameras will pick you up. This is Bidding City! That is how excited we are. Fresh Dew is a program designed just for you. It's designed to build you up and give you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. For this day two on Fresh Dew Life, Soton and Tola will minister again and I will be bringing the word of God. So let's settle down and enjoy Fresh Dew Life. saying. It sounds to me like she was saying, this ought not to be the case. This is contrary to my identity. This situation is not normal and I'm not going to take it. Look at the CV of my husband. In other words, somebody who served a prophet and somebody who was devoted to God should not be the family of somebody who served the Lord should not be in this state. That is the beginning of your turnaround. You must resist the temptation, that's number one, to develop a victim mentality. And that's what a lot of believers thrive in. You enjoy the sympathy, you have the victim mentality. What life has dealt you. You join the unbelievers to speak and say, it's Nigeria that happened to me. In what sense do you mean that? Nigeria has been happening to me. It's what you expect from Nigeria to give you. So it's not, even, it's not even funny. It's a social media trend and you say it. Nigeria happens to us. I lost my job. Nigeria happened to us. That means it's normal for a Nigerian to be poor and lose their job. You stay with it. She said, this is abnormal for a servant of God. One who was devoted to God. The first step is for you to understand that the state you are in now that needs to turn around, is not normal. You must begin to recognize when some things are not normal. In your life, in your health, in your ministry, get to admit that some things are not normal. Dissatisfaction precedes a turnaround. Dissatisfaction must precede a turnaround. You must be dissatisfied enough before that change can come. So she didn't believe 
she should be in that state. I believe she and her husband had dreams for their children. Anybody here who has children, even if you're an irresponsible father, you have dreams for your child. The dreams may be personal and selfish, but they are dreams. Maybe she and her prophet husband, uh, uh, some scholars say that was Obadiah, her husband. So maybe she and her husband had plans for their two boys. Two boys, two lovely boys. The first one will be a doctor when he grows up. Second one will be an engineer. They will grow up and go to school. As she was making those plans, a bot happened in her life. Her husband died. A double bot happened. He died and left them in debt. Suddenly, those plans were truncated. And from the dreams they had of doctor, lawyer, pastor, these boys were going to become slaves. Slaves. Slaves with their heritage. Slaves. What but has truncated your dreams? Maybe your father died. Maybe your husband died. Maybe your child fell sick. You didn't plan for that. You had to leave your job and focus on your child's life. You live in teaching hospital. That, that was not your plan when you had that child. But you wouldn't throw that child away. But the but has come in. But is a good word when it's used like, but God who is rich in mercy. I love that but. But but is a bad word when it does things like this in your life. And many of us here are victims of a but. My father was a senior civil servant. I've said this publicly many times. I grew up officially an Ajebota. I lived in a house. I had my own room. It was a suite. Every child had their own room in a suite. We had a driver that took us to school. I lived in Lagos. I never entered down for I wasn't allowed to. I could not eat on the road. One of the things my husband used to toast me was take me to Bole. Joint. I said, you mean we're going to stop on the road and eat? My mother would have killed me. So this man that was chasing me took me to Bole Joint. And I ate Bole and yam. I said, I'm marry you. <laughs> you have delivered me. I, I, I'm officially at Ajekpakoda. I'm no longer at Ajekpakoda. What? I can eat Bole. Is mommy watching? That's how I grew up. I didn't know that everything in our house was civil servant property. My father retired. He gave him a clock. And a few other things. Allowed him to go with the chair furniture. And we packed our things and left a six-bedroom house in Jerry Lagos. And in my young mind, I think I was in secondary school then, I suddenly realized that the bed, the chair, the air conditioner, everything. He was a very senior official. The car, the driver, they all disappeared overnight. That was a big butt in my life. And we ended up in some house, and from there went to even a smaller house. And by the time we went to that smaller house, most of the things he gathered, he had. They couldn't enter the house, they were outside. The rain would be falling, he'd be watching them. It wasn't long after he died. That was a but. That was a but. Of course, he knew they were civil servant property, but he didn't lie to us. We just assumed. And all his life, his entire plan was education for his children, and he achieved that. We all were excellently educated. But rather than spend that money on building houses and stuff, he faced us. If he traveled, he bought books for us. We had books this high. We read everything readable. That was his legacy to us, and I thank God for that. But after we left, the books did not open house for us immediately. My point is, so many of us are victims of the bot. And so you just, well, that's what happened to me. This woman refused to take it. My challenge to you today is, are you going to refuse as well? And they said that no matter the birth that's happened to you, there's something better in God. And it's called a turnaround. And the same way a negative birth happened, is the same way a positive birth can flip it right back. Glory be to God. So resist the temptation to have a 
victim mentality. That somebody who feels helpless, that's a victim. And passive in the face of misfortune or ill treatment. You say, well, this is what happened to me. I can manage, I stretch myself. And you adjust and manage it. No. Dissatisfaction precedes change. What did we learn yesterday? Whatsoever is born of God overcomes. Overcomes. Is these systems of the cosmos that bring such bots into your life? If my father had a different financial system working for him, he got born again later in life. If he understood sowing and reaping the way he was training his children, there would have been a backup plan to his job. But he didn't know better. He was plugged into the system of the cosmos. Faithfully said, people who come to his death, he was very influential. He worked in Wayek at the very top. So imagine the, the, one of the top post officials in Wayek in Nigeria, even then. People who come with suitcases of money for him to help them falsify results. My father was just quietly, he won't talk to them, just pick up his phone and press his security number. Why the man is still talking, security man, carry the man plus his money out of there. Many times they tried to kill him because he wouldn't take a cobble, which was great integrity. But you are plugged into the system of the world. That ain't going to help you much if you don't have the backup plan or the real plan of the world. Are you following what I'm saying? So whatsoever is born of God, when you have a revelation as an overcomer, like we learned yesterday, there are some things you will not take. And you will not fall into the trap of saying, hey, why me? Turn to your neighbor ask them, why me? Then ask him back. The person that told you, why me? Tell them back, why not you? Because if you know, listen, listen. If you know why not you, you won't ask why me. Why me is a question of pride. What do you think makes you better than the man next door? Why not you? So it's somebody else that should happen to. The only confidence you can say in why me is the way the woman said it. This is my identity like we just learned. These things don't happen to people like me. Then you can say why me. But if I said, ah, why me now? Why, 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 why not you? Or you're wishing it on someone else. You must shrug off the victim mentality and develop a victor mentality and say, no, overcoming is who I am. Amen. Amen. Second thing, when you now shrug off that mentality of a victim and decide that you are ready for change, you're angry, you know, sometimes you have to get angry to receive change. Be vexed in your spirit. Say, what nonsense. Enough of this nonsense. I'm not taking this anymore. You get to that point. Fresh dew. So even if you cause the mess you are in, even if you use your hand and attracted the bot in your life, it's okay. There's something greater than your mess. It's called the mercy of God. Drop mess and pick up mercy. Romans 10, 17 says, So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can order today's message and other past messages on our website store, freshdew.tv. It is available on MP3 and CD and also on MP4 and DVD just as seen on TV. Fresh Dew, giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 3737 4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234 700 3737 4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus 1. You can also send us an email 
to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Fresh Dew TV and also on Pastor Nkechi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Fresh Dew and receive Pastor Nkechi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website www.freshdew.tv Once again, thanks for being with us today and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life.